Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the Technology Innovation Hub. It's going to be the fourth session on uh, developing a generic carrier or achieving data carrier height. Uh, let me share the screen. I think uh, we have been uh, discussing uh, this, uh, the first slide almost uh, finished, right? And yeah, this we discussed in great detail. Let's go to the second one, right? Yes, uh, the very first thing is uh, skill for a successful journey, a skill for a successful journey, right? So for a successful career, what are the skills that uh, someone should develop from the early childhood? So that is what is the focus going to be. And just let's take a look at the points there. Right? The very first thing, can see cognitive and learning skills. Exactly, cognition, uh, cognition and learning skills. The cognitive ability of a child at the early stage matters for his career in, when he become an adult. Right? So those skills must be developed, right? So what are cognitive skills? Like, you know, reasoning, right? And memory, like visualization, something, right? Okay, let's let's discuss more detail. Right? So the second point, uh, okay, let's uh, take it to the. Uh, we can go to the page as well because uh, this one is self uh, reference, right? There's a reference for this. Before that, let's go to the uh, point. The second one is emotional, pro-social skills and behavior. Emotional, pro-social skills and behaviors. Yes, the emotional, right? Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of uh, resources, a lot of uh, human beings, right? Not, I mean, all of us are emotional. <laughs> emotional is a normal thing, but uh, when to be emotional, when not to be emotion, and controlling emotion, so that's what we need to learn, right? Because we, we know everybody has our EQ levels, emotion, right? EQ level, emotional quotients. Right. And uh, we know emotions are transient, it's not going to last for a long time, right? But the problem is, if the emotion is going to get last for a long time due to the bad relationships on the surrounding or with other people, right? It's going to become a mood, right? Emotions will change to mood, so moods are going to long last. Right? Anyway, let's discuss those things, but uh, emotions, we have to get control before it's becoming a mood, right? In double body mode, right? So, uh, and uh, let's discuss those things and uh, language and communication skills that mean that you know, right, and the character, and the personality, right? Right, so let's uh, get into that uh, link there. So the reference is this, right? It is again from uh, six pence. You can see uh, skills for a uh, success, right? Whether we are five year old, 50, or our potential to try depends on a complex and uh, interdependent set of skills are capable of that. Uh, we can read that, but uh, the main focus will be here cognition and cognition, character, and conduct. Now, the very first point, uh, you can see uh, the explanation is there. You can go through it again. Uh, this will be the major focus, the first one, cognition and learning skills. You can see, as I explained, the ability to focus attention, right? Peter, our distractions, prioritizing tasks and goals, follow instructions and demonstrate, abstract, reasoning, memory, visualization, right? So under cognition, right? Uh, Emotional pro skills, uh, you can see uh, emotional pro social skills and behaviors. So these are the things which I just explained again, you can see, but here empathy, ability, empathy, adaptability, impulse control, right? And the ability to form strong attachments with parents and peers, emotional and social competencies, 
at a critical and academic success exactly right because empirical understanding is very important empathy empirical understanding right you should learn to give and take give and take means you need to tolerate others right because we know when an expression or idea is expressed by another person as for him it is correct right but on the other side for us it may appear as a wrong understanding but for him is correct so we need to understand we need to get the empirical understanding the between two so that the matter can be sorted out right rather than becoming emotional right so likewise so again the language and communication skills right uh, we saw the diagram uh, the language uh, that's one of the very first early development abilities right a child uh, uh, yeah we have command of self expression comprehension vocabulary non uh, uh, yeah predictors academic success exactly right so just go to those things and then character strengths right uh, yeah perseverance and self confidence you can see personality responsibility right so we have the intrapersonal skills right which is comes here right not inter intra right okay right so uh, mainly uh, there are four things uh, it is discussed in this document as well so you can just uh, go to that one in brief i hope you got the idea so as a whole from the early childhood these skills must be developed right so how it can be done that's the other thing how it can be done so i have another video for that for example let's take a look at this serve and return interaction saves the brain circuits this is one method right at the early stage right let's go there that is again a video from uh, you can see it is again from center on european child harvard university right so just watch it carefully the fairly short video Let me play it for you. Yeah, just watch it carefully. The key to forming strong brain architecture is what's known as serve and return interaction with adults. In this developmental game, new neural connections form in the brain as young children instinctively serve through babbling, facial expressions, and gestures. and adults return the serve responding in a very directed meaningful way it starts very early in life when a baby coos and the adult interacts and directs the baby's attention to a face or hand this interaction forms the foundation of brain architecture upon which all future development will be built it helps create neural connections between all the different areas of the brain building the emotional and cognitive skills children need in life for example Here's how it works for literacy and language skills. When the baby sees an object, the adult says its name. This makes connections in the baby's brain between particular sounds and their corresponding objects. Later, adults show young children that those objects and sounds can also be represented by marks on a page. With continued support from adults, children then learn how to decipher writing and eventually to write themselves. Each stage builds on what came before, ensuring that children have adult caregivers who consistently engage and serve in return interaction. Beginning in infancy, builds a foundation in the brain for all the learning, behavior, and health that follow. All right, so that's uh, explained, right? So, and let's continue to the next one. Right. So again, uh, let's uh, what uh, I think uh, key features of early brain development. But before coming to that, I think there's another uh, visual we have how early childhood experiences affect lifelong health and learn. So this is another piece, right? How early childhood experiences affect lifelong health and learning. Right? <laughs> Evidences are there. Some, uh, I mean, chronic diseases like uh, you know the things which are not getting, right? Like uh, diabetics and uh, blood pressure and those things, right? And researchers are telling that one of the reasons the behaviors or the adaptation did in the early childhood, 
the reasons are that right so there are evidence given right anyway let's take a look at it right let's take a look at this video and it will explain uh, perfectly it is from uh, this place yeah that is how early childhood experiences affect lifelong health and learn right is from center on developing child at again harvard university so let's uh, watch that very carefully uh watch it and try to grab what is being explained right so let me uh, play this i think i left this up okay The early childhood brain development story has been a powerful influence on the growth of investments in programs to promote early learning and enhance school readiness. But the brain does not exist by itself. Connecting the brain to the rest of the body is critically important. Early childhood experiences are as much about lifelong physical and mental health as they are about early learning and readiness to succeed in school. All biological systems, all of them are highly interconnected and all of these systems are primed to adapt to whatever the environment would throw at us. Think about this as a team of highly skilled athletes. Each has a role to play, but they depend upon each other. They influence each other's responses like any good team. It's how they operate together that is the key to their success. When we are stressed, every cell in the body is working overtime. The brain is the master control system that detects threat and then manages the response of all of the different systems. It sends signals to the cardiovascular system to increase heart rate and blood pressure. Signals are picked up by metabolic systems to increase the availability of blood sugar to provide more energy stores for the body. The immune system is activated to be on alert for the possibility of a wound or the need to protect against infection. The neuroendocrine system is activated to increase levels of stress hormones in the bloodstream. All of these also provide feedback to the brain. The stress response system is designed to deal with an acute threat or challenge. But when the stress continues at a very high level, then these biological responses actually start to have a wear and tear effect on the body. This is where stress explains chronic disease. The science is really clear. The most costly chronic diseases in our society have their roots in early childhood. Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and depression, three of many diseases that are associated with greater adversity early in life. Those three diseases together consume more than $600 billion of healthcare costs a year. So if we want to think about preventing disease and promoting health. It doesn't begin with exercising more and eating better when you're 30 or 40 years old. Health promotion and preventing disease begins prenatally and it extends into the early childhood period. Connecting the brain to the rest of the body has very important implications for early childhood policy. If we look at the basic science-based principles focused on early learning, strengthening relationships, building skills, reducing sources of stress, those are the same principles that increase the likelihood for lifelong physical and mental health. And when we think about the major sources of adversity early in life, we talk about poverty, discrimination, exposure to violence, maltreatment, child abuse, and neglect. Although each of these sources of adversity differ from each other, biologically, the effect on the body is the same. Systemic racism, the dangers of implicit bias, and everyday discrimination impose a level of stress and adversity on families of color raising children that is present all the time. It's never too late to make things better, and we are biologically prepared to adapt to whatever environment we live in. But we need to look upstream at more systemic issues that are the sources of this enormous burden of threat and hardship. We have to connect policies and resource allocations from the educational sector and the health sector and the human services sector. Pediatric primary care is the 
one domain where almost all children are seen from birth on and provides a critical opportunity for engagement with families and developing relationships, promoting healthy development, and is the ideal frontline opportunity to connect families to needed services as early as possible when they can be most effective. Pediatrics alone is not going to provide all of the supports that many families need. The opportunity is to move away from asking, how do we connect pediatric primary care to early childhood programs? And in a different way, change our mindset to say, how do we build a new early childhood ecosystem in which pediatrics is an integrated part? The brain development story has been a powerful influence. The same principles, the same concepts are also affecting the early foundations of physical and mental health that will last for a lifetime. All right, so I hope you got the idea. Right? So you can see the root, right? As per the explanation, it goes for the prenatal, right? Not even after birth, it goes for the prenatal, right? So it starts from uh, mother, okay? So that's why, uh, I mean, we need to, uh, mother has a role to play, and uh, again, we need to support her, right? And there's an environment, a positive and proper environment for her to continue the journey, right? Likewise, because the nature expects, right? We know the love and kindness, right? Not the busyness, okay? <laughs> right, so things were well explained. So, I mean, the relationships and the cognitive development, environment factors, everything comes together from the early childhood, then these, a lot of these chronic diseases can be wiped out. So that's what the explanation was in summary. Mm, all right, so uh, next we have uh, toxic stress, uh, then uh, derails health, yeah, toxic stress, derails uh, health development, right? So this is about the stress, right? So how is uh, derails health, healthy development, you know, health, health factor deteriorates, right? If the stress continues to go and it affects from the early childhood, right? So, uh, okay, let's take a look at uh, that one as well, right? Let's go there. It's uh, from again, yeah, it's a small one. Let's take a look at it again from the same uh, YouTube channel, Center for Center on Developing Child Harvard University. Right, uh, let me uh, play that one for you. Yes, yes, listen carefully. Learning to deal with stress is an important part of healthy development. When experiencing stress, the stress response system is activated. The body and brain go on alert. There's an adrenaline rush, increased heart rate, and an increase in stress hormone levels. When the stress is relieved after a short time, or a young child receives support from caring adults, the stress response winds down and the body quickly returns to normal. In severe situations, such as ongoing abuse and neglect, where there is no caring adult to act as a buffer against the stress, the stress response stays activated. Even when there is no apparent physical harm, the extended absence of response from adults can activate the stress response system. Constant activation of the stress response overloads developing systems with serious lifelong consequences for the child. This is known as toxic stress. Over time, this results in a stress response system set permanently on high alert. In the areas of the brain dedicated to learning and reasoning, the neural connections that comprise brain architecture are weaker and fewer in number. Science shows that the prolonged activation of stress hormones in early childhood can actually reduce neural connections in these important areas of the brain at just the time when they should be growing new ones. Toxic stress can be avoided if we ensure that the environments in which children grow and develop are nurturing, stable, and engaging. All right, so the environment, uh, nurturing, engaging, right? So very uh, clearly well explained. 
So that's why we need to manage the toxic body. I mean, we should not have it from the early childhood development. Uh, it should be controlled so that, uh, I mean, how can we have a better career if those things are going to come into play, right? So, I mean, stress, we know, right? So it has to be managed properly. So anyway, so if it is being taught to the brain from the early childhood, so it will be managed properly. So that's what it says. Uh, it affects the circuitry level in the brain, oh, right, right? So let's stop here and uh, let me continue in the next session. Otherwise, it's dragging for too long this session. Yeah, I'll meet you soon. Okay, have a great time. Bye bye.